The operation of the retractable hardtop on the 1957 through 59 Ford Skyliners occurs in two separate cycles. The retract cycle and the erect cycle. Each of these cycles is made up of six separate sequences. For the retract cycle, these are deck lid unlock, deck lid open, package tray extend, roof unlock, roof retract, and deck lid close and lock. cycle these are deck lid unlock deck lid open roof erect roof lock package tray fold and deck lid close and lock before getting into the cycles and their sequences let's locate and identify the devices that make all this happen the starter relay is located under the hood and is the connecting point for the wires that provide battery voltage to the rest of the system. Two circuit breakers are mounted inside the passenger compartment just above the kick panel on the driver's side. The 10 amp breaker protects the control voltage while the 45 amp breaker protects the common motor feed. The ignition switch enables the control voltage when it's in the on or accessory position. An interlock switch mounted under the dashboard on the steering column prevents the top from being operated with the transmission in gear. This switch is set from the factory to operate when the gear shift is in neutral. The one shown here has been modified to operate with the automatic shift lever in park. The roof actuation switch is attached to the underside of the dashboard just to the left of the steering column. When pulled and held out, the retract sequences operate. Pushing and holding the switch in operates the erect sequences. Either operation can be stopped at any point by releasing the switch. And direction can be reversed by operating the switch to the opposite position. Position A switch is located behind the roof side trim panel on the driver's side. The roof position B switch is mounted inside the left rear quarter panel under the roof quarter lock assembly. The roof position C switch is located in the roof header on the passenger side. The roof position D switch is on the driver's side. The roof erect and delay switch is mounted inside the right rear quarter panel under the roof quarter lock assembly. The roof retract limit switch is attached to the floor of the luggage compartment behind the right rear wheel well. The deck position B switch is mounted on the passenger side deck lock assembly bracket. The deck open limit switch is located behind the trunk lining board and situated between the quarter panel and the right deck lid hinge. The deck lock limit switch is situated between the deck lid and the left side deck lock screw. The, 
retract cycle tray limit switch is mounted in the deck lid and attached to its access panel. The tray limit switch for the erect cycle is mounted next to the tray motor. The tray motor extends and folds the package tray. It is directly coupled to the transmission assembly that operates the mechanism. A 10 amp circuit breaker located under the deck lock motor toward the passenger side protects the tray motor. The other 10 amp circuit breaker protects the deck lock motor. This motor drives the deck lock screw and transmission assemblies on both sides of the deck lid through flexible drive shafts. The drive shafts consist of a flexible cable inside a flexible casing. The ends of the cable are squared off to fit into the square keyholes in the ends of the motor shafts and the transmission assembly's worm gears. The casing's tapered ends are secured to all the motors and the transmission assemblies of the roof and deck lift jacks with knurled threaded caps. The deck drive motor is mounted behind the trunk lining board at the rear of the luggage compartment. Its 10 amp breaker is found nearby. This motor raises and lowers the deck lid through flexible drive shafts connected to the left and right deck lid lift jacks. Attached to the floor of the trunk, at the rear of the spare tire well, is the roof drive motor and its 20 amp circuit breaker. This motor is larger than the others but drives the same type of flexible drive shafts to operate the roof lift jacks through their transmission assemblies. The front roof lock motor is located in the roof header behind the trim panel. Once again, flexible drive shafts are used to operate the transmission assemblies of the left and right roof lock screws. The 10 amp circuit breaker for this motor is found in the trunk, mounted to the panel behind the rear seat back in the upper right corner. The 1957 and 58 models have two rear roof lock motors, one on each side, under the rear roof lock nut and transmission assemblies. Short, flexible drive shafts connect them together. The motor's 10 amp circuit breakers are mounted to the floorboard under the rear seat on either side. On 59 models, a single motor drives both the left and right rear roof lock nuts through flexible drive shafts. The motor and its 10 amp circuit breaker are mounted on top of the relay control box behind the rear seat back. The relay control box houses 10 power relays that start, stop, and control the direction of the reversible motor. Now, let's look at how all these work together to cycle the top. Both the retract and erect cycles are controlled by the operator from the roof actuating switch. 12 volts DC is made available to the switch's common contact from the battery by way of a wire from the battery terminal on the starter relay to the ignition switch. With the ignition switch in the on or accessory position, control voltage is provided through its 10 amp circuit breaker to the interlock switch. A wire from the interlock switch completes the circuit to the roof actuating switch. The retract cycle starts with the roof erect, 
the deck lid closed and locked, the ignition switch in the on or accessory position, and the neutral interlock switch closed. Sequence one, deck lid unlock. When the actuating switch is pulled out and held, current flows through the roof erect and delay switch. and the deck open limit switch. To the deck unlock power relay. Activating the deck unlock power relay applies power to the deck lock motor. The motor turns the flexible drive shaft, which turns the deck lock screws counterclockwise, unlocking the deck lid. As the screws move away from their nut assemblies, the deck lock limit switch and the deck position B switch are allowed to operate. Current can now flow through the cycle indicator lamp on the left side of the dashboard. Further upward movement of the deck lid allows the upper contacts of the deck position B switch to close, activating the deck open power relay. Sequence 2 deck open. The deck open power relay applies power to the deck motor, which drives the deck lift jacks. The lift jacks raise the deck lid, with the help of the deck assist springs, until the passenger side hinge operates the deck open limit switch. Operating the deck open limit switch opens the circuit to the deck unlock and deck open power relays stopping the deck lid and deck lock motors. A second set of contacts on the deck open limit switch close when the deck lid is fully open. These contacts allow current to flow through the retract cycle tray limit switch, operating the tray extend power relay. Sequence three, package tray extend. The tray extend power relay, labeled tray relay, roof retract cycle, applies power to the tray motor, which rotates out the package tray through its transmission assembly. As the package tray reaches a position parallel to the deck lid, a switch actuator attached to the package tray operates the tray limit switch, retract cycle. This action opens the circuit to the tray extend power relay, stopping the tray motor. Operating the tray limit switch, retract cycle, closes a second set of contacts. Completing a circuit through the roof position A switch to the roof unlock power relay. Sequence four, roof unlock. The roof unlock power relay supplies power to the front roof lock motor and the two rear roof lock motors on the 57 and 58 models, or the one rear roof lock motor on the 59 models. As the roof is raised by the turning of the two roof lock screws and the two rear roof lock nuts, the roof position B, C, and D switches, as well as the roof erect and delay switch, are allowed to operate and close the control circuit to the roof retract power relay through the roof retract limit switch. Note that the roof position C and D switches are each actually two separate switches that are operated together. A stationary pin inside the lock nuts operates an actuator pin that runs through the middle of the lock screws. The actuator pins operate the switch linkage, which in turn operates the plungers of both switches. The roof position B and the roof erect and delay switches operate much the same way, except that the actuator pins for these switches run through the lock nuts and are operated directly by the lock screws. These four switches are wired in series to prevent the roof retract power relay from activating before all four of the roof lock screws are free of their lock nuts.
Sequence 5, Roof Retract. The Roof Retract Power Relay activates the roof motor, which turns the flexible drive shafts that drive the transmission assemblies and turn the roof lift jack screws. The roof lift jacks pull the roof lift arms toward the rear of the car. This action drives the power link arms, which are connected to the rear power links. The rear power links are attached to the roof at the lower power link bell crank pivot brackets and to the floor of the luggage compartment at the power link pivot brackets. As the power link arms are moved toward the rear of the car, the rear power links lift the roof and begin to move it toward the trunk. When the roof is raised approximately four inches off its locks, the left rear power link allows the roof position A switch to operate. Opening the circuit to the roof unlock power relay, thus stopping the roof lock motors. As the rear power links continue their rearward movement, the control link and the control link arm maintain the proper attitude of the top so that it will clear the heads of rear seat passengers and enter the trunk at the proper angle. As the roof retracts, the upper portions of the rear power links pivot on the lower power link bell crank pivot brackets and pull the rear power link turnbuckle downward. The rear power link turnbuckle pulls on the upper power link bell crank, causing it to rotate on its pivot and push the center power link forward. This action pushes on the roof hinge bell crank, which folds the front portion of the roof back under the rear roof section. When the control link guide pins enter the roof control link guides, the downward movement of the control link is inhibited. But the power link arm continues to drive the rear power link down. This action causes the rear part of the roof to travel toward the rear of the car, while the front of the roof is pulled down into the trunk. The downward movement of the roof front is dampened by the control link assist springs. As the control link and the control link arm are pushed toward the rear of the trunk. The dampening by the control link assist springs allows the front portion of the roof to gently set down on the foam rubber pads that are cemented to the rear wheel housings. When the right side control link reaches the end of its rearward travel, it operates the roof retract limit switch, opening the circuit to the roof retract power relay and stopping the roof motor. Sequence six, deck lid close and lock. Operating the roof retract limit switch also closes a second set of contacts on the switch, allowing current to flow to the deck lock power relay and to the deck close power relay through the deck position B switch. The two power relays start their respective motors, closing and locking the deck lid. As the deck lock screws draw the deck lid down, the first stage of the deck position B switch is operated by the deck position B switch actuator, opening the circuit to the deck close power relay and stopping the deck motor. When the deck is fully locked, the second stage of the deck position B switch is operated. At the same time, the pin in the driver's side deck lock nut assembly pushes up the plunger in the deck lock screw, which opens the deck lock limit switch. These actions open the circuit to the cycle indicator light. The cycle indicator light going out is an indication to the operator that the deck lid is fully locked and the actuating switch may be released. Releasing the actuating switch allows its spring to return to the neutral position, thus stopping the deck lock motor and completing the cycle.
erect cycle starts with the roof and the trunk. The deck lid closed and locked. The ignition switch in the on or accessory position. And the interlock switch closed. The erect cycle is started by the operator pushing and holding in the actuating switch. Sequence one, deck lid unlock. In the retract cycle, the deck lid unlock circuit passed through the roof erect and delay switch to the deck open limit switch. For the erect cycle, current passes through the roof retract switch and deck open limit switch to the deck unlock power relay. Activating the deck unlock power relay applies power to the deck lock motor, which drives the deck lock screws and unlocks the deck lid. As the deck lid unlocks, the deck position B switch and the deck lock limit switch operate, turning on the cycle indicator light. The deck position B switch also closes the circuit to the deck open power relay. Sequence two, deck lid open. This sequence is the same as in the retract cycle, except that the control circuit passes through the roof retract switch instead of the roof erect and delay switch. the deck open power relay active, the deck motor drives the deck lift jacks and raises the deck lid until the passenger side hinge operates the deck open limit switch. When the deck open limit switch is operated, the deck lock and deck drive motors stop and a circuit is completed to the roof erect power relay through the roof position B switch. Sequence three, roof erect. The roof erect power relay starts the roof motor, which drives the roof lift jacks. The roof lift jacks now push the roof lift arms toward the front of the car. The roof link arms pull upward on the power links. This action raises the forward portion on the roof up and out of the luggage compartment and slides the control link guide pins forward and out of the roof control link guides with the aid of the control link assist springs. As the power links continue to rotate upward, the forward motion of the control link arms is stopped by the control link adjusting screws. This causes the control links to now pivot upward and toward the front of the car and again maintain the proper attitude of the roof as it moves toward the windshield header. As the rear power links move forward, the rear power link turnbuckles rotate the power link bell cranks, pulling the center power links rearward. The center power links rotate the front roof hinge bell cranks, which swing the roof front around to a position matching the contour of the roof. When the roof reaches a position approximately four inches above the roof locks, the driver's side rear roof power link operates the roof position A switch, starting the roof lock motors. When the driver's side roof quarter lock screw enters its lock nut, it pushes on the actuating pin in the center of the nut, which operates the roof position B switch. The roof position B switch contacts in the roof erect power relay control circuit now open and stop the roof motor. Sequence four, roof lock. The roof lock motors were running before the roof erect sequence completed when the roof position A switch was operated by the rear roof power link. In the retract cycle, it was pointed out that the roof position C and D switches were each actually two switches. These two switches and the roof position B switch, as well as the roof erect and delay switch, 
are wired in parallel so that the roof lock motors will continue to run until all four of the roof lock screws are fully seated. Any lock that reaches the end of its travel before the others will ratchet until the four parallel switch contacts are open. When the roof position B, C, and D switches and the roof erect and delay switch are all opened, the roof lock power relay is de-energized and the roof lock motors stop. Sequence 5. Package tray fold. When the passenger side roof quarter lock screw entered its lock nut, it pushed down the pin in the center of the nut and operated the roof erect and delay switch. The contacts closest to the plunger close and complete the circuit to the tray power relay, roof erect cycle, through the tray limit switch, roof erect cycle. The tray power relay, roof erect cycle, operates the tray motor, folding the tray back under the deck lid. When the package tray contacts the foam rubber pads on the deck lid, the tray switch actuator, roof erect cycle, operates the tray limit switch, roof erect cycle, which opens the circuit to the tray fold power relay and stops the tray motor. Sequence six, deck close and lock. Operating the tray fold limit switch closes a second set of contacts that energize the deck lock power relay and through the deck position B switch, the deck close power relay. Energizing these two relays starts the deck lock and deck close motors. The rest of the deck close and lock sequence is exactly the same as in the retract cycle. The first stage of deck position B switch stops the deck motor. Its second stage, in parallel with the deck lock limit switch, turns off the cycle indicator light, signaling the operator to release the actuator switch. Once the actuator switch is released, the deck lock motor stops and the cycle is complete. Wait! Don't stop the tape yet. There are some folks who can provide you with whatever you need for your retract. Concours Parts Pre 1949 to 1959 Big Car Catalog. This catalog is the most complete and the easiest to read in the industry. Specializing in parts for your 57 to 59 retractable. Call for your copy today. Turn with confidence to Dennis Carpenter for weather stripping parts needed for repairing or restoring your Ford retractable. Parts reproduced to original design, assuring exacting fit. His 57 to 59 catalog lists each rubber seal, grommet, bumper, or pad required for all three years of the Ford Retractor. A total of 34 separate components. Listed also are hundreds of other parts, including the Skyliner roof script in gold color. Call or write for a catalog today. In 1971, a retired General Motors engineer founded the International Ford Retractable Club to promote the restoration, preservation, and further the interest in the 1957, 1958, and 1959 Ford Skyliner retractable hardtop, produced by the Ford Motor Company. We do this by publishing a monthly newsletter and send it first class with retractable technical tips articles, and ads. We also have a national convention yearly in different parts of the country with several retractable judged and display classes. Nickel Productions found this video entertaining as well as informative. 
We look forward to being with you again when we present the Remarkable Retractable Volume 2, which will cover the maintenance and adjustments for the retractable hardtops on the 1957 through 59 Ford Skyliners. Watch our ads for a release date and ordering information.